Hello everyone, Interact back here again with another episode of Entity Education. In this episode, we're going to be covering the Executioner, who is probably extremely better known as either Pyramid Head, Akai Sankakuto, or Sankaku Atama, depending on who you ask. I asked the wiki. If you asked James or Eddie, they'd probably call it... But I'll just stick to calling him Pyramid Head. As always, there will be timestamps up on the screen right now, and also down in the description below, as well as the pinned comment, and YouTube has the new thing, so it'll be on the time track as well, which is super neat. Pyramid Head has the same base stats as most killers, a movement speed of 4.6 meters per second, or 115%, and a terror radius of 32 meters. Nothing too special about him outside of his anime-sized sword that they call a knife for some reason, and, of course, the pyramid on his head. So let's talk about his power, Rites of Judgment. When I say power, he really has like three of them. So strap in, we're gonna go for a nice little ride. Let's start off at the beginning of his power, and the first thing you're going to see when you load into a match is Pyramid Head. You'll notice you have a red charge bar in the bottom left, and can hold down M2 or whatever it is on console to use Rites of Judgment. This has a one second charge time, so it'll take you one second to stick your knife into the ground and start dragging it along. During this time, you will be slowed down to 3.68 meters per second, or 92% speed. While dragging it along, you will spawn a torment trail behind you for as long as you keep it held down, and will be slowed down to 4.4 meters per second, or 110% speed. The trails will spawn behind you while you're walking and cutting open the ground, I guess. You will notice that your yaw speed will be pretty heavily restricted, and your horizontal camera movement will be just completely taken away from you. The Torment Trails will last for 75 seconds by default, and then slowly fade away. There is a cap of having only about 100 total Torment Trail points alive at any given time in a match, and I could go into more details about what this actually means, and how the trails are separated into smaller little chunks that are like 0.8 meters wide and how you'd spawn them it, it's nothing that really needs to get into you're not going to notice all these minute details unless you're running around spamming rites of judgment all over the place you are unable to actually keep your torment trails alive within four meters of generators or hooks and three meters of exit gates or the hatch so keep that in mind you also aren't allowed to spawn any torment trails in the basement, but you can spawn them right outside of the stairs at the exit. Spawning any trails like this is called a restricted trail, and they do still actually spawn, but they fade out of existence in three seconds. Coming out of Rites of Judgment takes only half of a second, 0.5 seconds, so it's pretty quick to cancel or to end. Rites of Judgment takes 20 seconds to fully recharge, and will expend itself fully in 5 seconds while you're dragging the Great Knife along. Keep in mind that you do not need a full charge to be able to use Rites, so you can use it whenever you want as long as you have some amount of charge, although it won't last as long, obviously, on shorter charges. A thing to note is that if you stand still while channeling Rites of Judgment, it will not drain at all as long as you do not move. If you begin to move, this effect will get cancelled. This mostly comes into play with the punishment of the damned attack, which I'll cover in just a few minutes. So what exactly do these torment trails actually do, you may wonder? Well, if any survivor steps on them while not crouching, so walking or running, they will become inflicted with torment, scream out, and give you killer instinct notifications for 3 seconds. The torment trail piece will get consumed once a survivor runs over it as well. As I said, survivors can just crouch move over trails to not get affected by torment though, so don't think you're 100% going to cut them off at a choke point or prevent them from touching a generator without getting tormented. You can also see the aura of your torment trails while you're within 32 meters of them for whatever that's worth. So now you might be wondering what the torment effect does. Well, it puts some barbed wire on the survivor's portrait in the bottom left and allows you as Pyramid Head to press left control or whatever it is on console after they've been downed to send them to a cage of atonement. 
This will pretty much instantly teleport them across the map and put them in the Gulag. This does progress their hooked status, however it functions differently from hooks. They are unable to attempt to escape from a cage on their first time in, and if they are on second stage hook or cage, they will be given difficult skill checks instead of having to mash a single button to struggle. If a survivor has been hooked and or caged twice and is on death hook, instead of caging them, Pyramid Head will do a final judgment and just give them a nice little mini Mori that takes like two seconds maybe. Outside of cages, that's pretty much all Torment does. It does give survivors a nice PlayStation 1 era graphic on their screen, which I think is really cool and very reminiscent of Silent Hill. It's unclear as to whether this graphic is bugged or not, but I actually hope that it's supposed to be low res like this because it really does evoke a PlayStation 1 era feel, which is very Silent Hill. Torment will also cause survivors to spawn little trails of barbed wire out of the ground behind them, which can be kind of nice for tracking the mid-chase. The only way for survivors to get rid of the Torment effect is to either save or be saved from a Cage of Atonement. This means that if you apply Torment and never use a Cage of Atonement, they will have the Torment effect for the entire match. This can aid in tracking and will also let you just skip the final death hook and mini more them instead. You may notice something else while you're using Rites of Judgment. If you press mouse 1, you can use a Punishment of the Damned attack. Using a Punishment of the Damned attack will consume 20% of your maximum charge of Rites of Judgment. Punishment of the Damned is a shockwave line attack with a range of 8 meters by default. It will take 0.267 seconds to charge up before it's actually fully unleashed, and then it will hit all survivors in its area of effect, and can go through objects and walls. It does actually go out in a shockwave, like the animation would lead you to believe, but it's so fast I doubt you're really going to notice each individual piece doing damage. The hitbox also seems a little janky, since the damage effect actually lingers around for 0.18 seconds, and the width seems to be more of a suggestion sometimes, but that's just the Dead by Daylight that we all know and love. Whether you miss or hit with your Punishment of the Damned attack, you're going to suffer a 2.75 second cooldown after the attack is finished. This means that you're typically going to want to commit to Punishment only if you know it's going to land and hit a survivor. With all of that out of the way, let's talk about add-ons now. We start off at the common tier with Lead Ring. This add-on will slightly increase the duration of your Rites of Judgment trails remaining in the environment or on the ground or however they want to do it. This means an increase of 10 seconds, bringing it up to 85 seconds total. Do keep in mind, however, you're only allowed to have 100 trail points, so yeah. Next up is Dead Butterfly. This add-on will slightly increase the recharge rate of your Rites of Judgment. This means a reduction to your recharge rate of 2 seconds, bringing it down to 18 seconds total to fully recharge your Rites of Judgment. Following that, we have Copper Ring. This add-on will slightly increase the maximum time that you can perform Rites of Judgment. This means an increase to the total time that you can drag your Great Knife along the ground of 1 second, bringing it up to 6 seconds total. And the final common add-on is Black Strap. This add-on will slightly increase the range of your Punishment of the Damned attack. This means an increase of 0.5 meters to your Punishment of the Damned, bringing it up to 8.5 meters total. Moving on to the uncommon add-ons, we start with Wax Doll. This add-on will moderately increase the range of your Punishment of the Damned attack. This means an increase of 1 meter to your Punishment of the Damned, bringing it up to 9 meters total. Next up is Spearhead. No, not Pyramid Head. That's the killer's name. The add-on is Spearhead. Don't get them confused. This add-on will moderately increase the total amount of time Rites of Judgment can be performed. This means an increase to the amount of time that you can cut the ground in a nice edgy blood puddles of 1.5 seconds, bringing you up to 6.5 seconds total. Next up is Leopard Print Fabric. 
This add-on will slightly increase the duration of Killer Instinct triggers from your Rites of Judgment. This means an increase of 0.5 seconds to Killer Instinct triggers from the trails left behind by Rites of Judgment, bringing it up to 3.5 seconds total. Following that is Forgotten Videotape. This add-on will moderately increase the recharge rate of Rites of Judgment. This means a reduction to your recharge rate of 3 seconds, bringing it down to 17 seconds to fully recharge your Rites of Judgment, and a 100% chance of you hating James. And the final uncommon add-on is Cinderella Music Box. This add-on will moderately increase the duration of your Rites of Judgment trails remaining on the ground. This means an increase of 15 seconds, bringing it up to 90 seconds total. Moving on to the rare add-ons now, we start with Valteel Sect Photograph. This add-on will considerably increase the recharge rate of Rites of Judgment. This means a decrease of 4 seconds to the recharge rate, bringing it down to 16 seconds total. Next up is Tablet of the Oppressor. This add-on will considerably increase the total amount of time Rites of Judgment can be performed. This means an increase of 2 seconds, bringing it up to 7 seconds total to drag your knife across the ground and make the earth bleed. Next up is Misty Day, Remains of Judgment. Didn't expect an American Horror Story reference, but cool. This add-on will moderately increase the duration of Killer Instinct triggers from your Rites of Judgment. This means an increase of 1 second to Killer Instinct triggers from the trails left by Rites of Judgment, bringing them up to 4 seconds total. Following that is a Mannequin Foot, and I really don't want to know what Pyramid Head is doing with it. However, the add-on will considerably increase the duration of your Rites of Judgment trails remaining on the ground. This means an increase of 20 seconds to the gashes in the ground staying around, bringing them up to 95 seconds total. And the final add-on is Burning Man Painting. This add-on will considerably increase the range of your Punishment of the Damned attack. This means an increase of 1.5 meters to Punishment of the Damned, bringing it up to 9.5 meters total. Going up a tier now, the first very rare add-on is Scarlet Egg. This add-on will considerably increase the duration of Killer Instinct triggers from your Rites of Judgment. This means an increase of 1.5 seconds to your Killer Instinct bleep bloops, bringing them up to 4.5 seconds total. Following that is Rust Covered Egg. This add-on will make survivors affected by your Rites of Judgment suffer from the blindness status effect for 60 seconds. This means that you'll have wasted an add-on slot by equipping it, which for a very rare is pretty hard to pull off, honestly. And next up is Lost Memories Book. This add-on will make survivors affected by your Rites of Judgment suffer from the oblivious status effect for 15 seconds. I have to applaud behavior at this point, honestly. I didn't expect this many very rare add-ons to just be memes. And finally, we have the Crimson Ceremony Book. This add-on will make survivors who are affected by torment suffer from the hemorrhage status- Are you actually kidding me, behavior? You've been working on this killer for god knows how long. From an IP that is extremely respected. And these are the very rare add-ons that you came up with. Just stop it. Get some help. So let's talk about Conehead's ultra rare add-ons instead. We start with Obsidian Goblet. This add-on will give you the undetectable status effect while you are standing on a Rites of Judgment trail. While this is a pretty cool idea, I'm not entirely sure that you can get that much usage out of it in the middle of a match. And while it does say standing, you can actually just walk along your trails and stay undetectable. Just keep in mind that Pyramid Head isn't exactly the smallest person, so they'll probably just see you coming. And the final ultra rare add-on, and the final add-on in general, is Iridescent Seal of Metatron. I have no idea why he has an add-on straight out of Transformers, but I've only played Silent Hill 2. This add-on will make it so whenever you send a survivor to a Keijo Atonement aka the Gulag, you will see the aura of all survivors affected by Torment for 6 seconds. This can be a decent enough add-on for some nice wall hacks, but every time you cage a survivor, you're going to be losing two survivors worth of torment, so it does have kind of a weird anti-synergy built into it because reasons. 
So now let's talk about the teachable perks that you'll unlock when you put your blood points into Pyramid Head. At level 30, you'll unlock the teachable for the perk Forced Penance. Forced Penance will make it so any survivor who takes a protection hit will suffer from the broken status effect for 40 slash 50 slash 60 seconds. At level 35, you'll unlock the teachable for the perk Trail of Torment, which is very confusing given that his ability gives torment and he leaves behind trail, whatever. After clicking a generator, you will gain the undetectable status effect for 16 seconds. Thank you very much, Behavior, for buffing this by one second from the PTB. I truly appreciate it. During this time, however, the generator that you kicked will appear with a yellow aura for all survivors. This effect also has a cooldown of 80 slash 70 slash 60 seconds. And finally, at level 40, you'll unlock the teachable for one of the most confusing perks, Deathbound. Deathbound has a very interesting and very hard to explain effect, but I'll try my best. Once a survivor heals another survivor for a single health state, as long as they are 32 meters or more away from the killer, any survivor who was doing the healing and finished the action on their teammate will give out a scream, giving out one or more scream notifications and activating Deathbound for 60 seconds. While Deathbound is active, if any of the survivors who finished the heal and gave out the scream move further than 16 slash 12 slash 8 meters from the survivor that was healed, they will all suffer from the oblivious status effect. This perk is so weird and convoluted and confusing, but I hope that I explained it in a way that actually makes sense. So let's talk about some tips for playing Pyramid Head. I'm going to start off by saying that I think a lot of people are super overvaluating the Cages of Atonement. While yes, it is nice to save a few seconds here and there, not having to hook survivors, and yeah, it counters DS and borrowed time and deliverance and sloppy meat, slippery meat, whatever that perk's called. Uh, it's going to send the survivors across the map, meaning that they may almost get out of Cages just basically instantaneously if they spawn near other survivors. If this happens, you've pretty much not actually gotten any pressure out of caging them outside of progressing their hook stage, and that can be pretty bad because you're not actually wasting a lot of the survivor's time, as you would if they had to run across the map to unhook them. The scenario in which pressing left control on a tormented survivor that will actually save you a lot of time is when they're on death hook. Not having to waste a hook, just becoming permanently broken, and just doing a tiny mini mori that takes all of maybe two or three seconds is a lot better than trying to find a hook and hooking them on it. I think the prevailing common wisdom about cages is that if you would slug a survivor, either because they have DS or because you just need to keep pressuring somewhere else, you may as well use a cage. I somewhat agree with this since the cages at least get them closer to being on death hook, but do keep in mind that the only way survivors have of actually getting torment off of them is by saving someone in a cage or being saved from a cage. So if you want to use Torment for the Mini Moris, you should probably just slug them or pick them up and put them on a hook instead. So let's talk about the Trails of Torment and just Torment in general. When should you be using Trails? I personally feel that you'll be best served using Trails of Torment and Rites of Judgment or whatever the hell it's called at choke points and around generators or other things that you want to protect. And basically just using it as like a a tripwire early detection alarm system. This makes it kind of like a tracking tool, but once survivors are tormented, they are a lot easier to follow and chase because of the barbed wire that they leave on the ground behind them, so it does have some effect later on. If you're looking to get survivors tormented for whatever reason and you're really dead set on it, you can just put down your rights of judgment trails at loops that they're currently using. It's a pretty easy method. I do feel like Trails of Torment and Rites of Judgment in general is going to be a lot like Demogorgon's portals, where if you try to use it too much, then you're just going to end up wasting a lot of time and getting slapped around and losing generators left and right. I think you want to use Rites of Judgment sparingly, and only when you really need information on when they're going to a certain spot on the map because you want to like defend this one generator that's super close to being finished. Torment, I don't think, is a status that you should really be focusing on applying to all of the survivors. 
so I don't think that spamming trails all over the place in the hopes of tormenting every survivor for every single hook or cage is a good idea. And obviously, talking about punishment of the damned, you want to use it at loops, pallets, windows, or basically any choke point where they either can't dodge it very easily, or they're stuck in an animation so they automatically get hit, or they just don't have room to maneuver. You're also going to want to mind the massive yaw speed penalty you get when you attempt it, and you really shouldn't be using it unless you're 99% sure that it's going to land, because the cooldown is very punishing, apologies for the pun. So spamming it at loops isn't something you're going to want to do unless you're guaranteed to get the hit, because they could just run away in those 3 seconds while you're sitting around waiting. Also keep in mind that you do make a very loud sound when you are going into Rites of Judgment while Pyramid Head is stabbing the Great Knife into the ground to be able to use Punishment of the Damned. So even if the survivor isn't looking behind them because they're a Papega, I guess, they're still going to be able to hear that you're going to be attempting it. So keep that in mind. They might try and juke you. You can do a little bit of mind gaming with it, but it does take, you know, one second to go in, half a second to come out, and that's time that you're going to be losing because you're going to be slowed down. So let's now move on to talking about perk builds. As always with new killers, the meta hasn't fully developed for Pyramid Head yet, so I'll just highlight some perks I think work well with this kit, and maybe give an example build that I've been using that I think works well. All the usual perks that you'd expect to be good on pretty much any killer are really no exception for Pyramid Head. Barbecue and Chili, Whispers, Corrupt Intervention, Pop Goes the Weasel, perks like that are all solid inclusions, just use your preference based on if you want tracking, easier early game, slow down, whatever. Let's specifically talk more about Chrome Dome and what perks work well with him though. Once again, since it has been like less than a week since he came out, I'm not sure that a true meta has shaken out for him. Personally, I think that you're going to want to build around the shell of the perks Monitor and Abuse and Infectious Fright. I really think that's where you're going to want to be with Pyramid Head. For the other two perks, you could use something like Sloppy Butcher and Nurse's Calling, or Corrupt Intervention and Barbecue and Chili, or really whatever else you feel like using. It really depends on what you think you need to bring. I feel that Pyramid Head is a pretty solid killer, so perks aren't really going to make too much of a difference with him, but I really think that the advantage that you're going to get for Monitor and Abuse and Infectious Fright combo, not only for sneaking up on survivors a bit easier because of that smaller terror radius, but also for snowballing when you down a survivor, I really think that's going to be pretty key for Pyramid Head, and just most killers in general at this point. I don't believe that Pyramid Head really needs any anti-loop perks, I don't think you need Enduring Spirit Fury. For most pallets, you can typically get a Punishment of the Damned attack, and if not, you know, you can just run around it, or mind game it, and use Punishment of the Damned to hit them anyways, because you do have that short range attack, so I don't really think that you're going to need Enduring Spirit Fury. I, you could run it if you really felt like it, I guess. I think a lot of the discussion for Pyramid Head and perk usage is going to come down to whether or not you think it's worth using the after you hook a survivor perks, like Pop Goes the Weasel or Barbecue, or if you shouldn't use them. And I think the same as well goes for the applies on basic attack perks, like Sloppy Butcher, Save the Best for Last. Personally, I find that while I'm playing Pyramid Head, I am definitely hooking enough survivors to get usage out of Pop Goes the Weasel or Barbecue, and I'm definitely basic attacking enough to get usage out of at least Sloppy Butcher, but probably not enough for Save the Best for Last. I don't think Save the Best for Last is a good perk inclusion for Pyramid Head, even though you can save stacks by using Punishment of the Damned. It's just that every Punishment of the Damned that you do on a non-obsession is a stack that you could have gotten. So personally for me, I think that my build, once I finally get him prestige 3, all perks, 50, level, you know, all that garbage, is going to look something like this. Barbecue and Chili, Monitor and Abuse, Sloppy Butcher, and a Nurse's Calling. While I did say that Infectious Fright is going to be a very strong perk on him, I just really dislike slugging and snowballing like that because I personally find it boring to leave people on the ground while I chase someone else and I'm way too attached to barbecue to really ever drop it willingly. I'm seriously reaching like K-pop levels of stand for barbecue and I need help. Please send some. So now let's move on to some meme builds for Pyramid Head. 
These were kind of hard to come up with because add-ons are just kind of like generic increase number by X here and decrease number by X there. But I think I've come up with two pretty decent ones. The first meme build is Metro Head. For this build, you're going to want to bring the add-ons Obsidian Goblet and Mannequin Foot. With this build, you can basically make yourself nice little metro tunnels around the map that will hide your presence while you run on top of them. Try drawing a nice little path between the stuff that you want to be defending and channel your inner Bob Ross. Just make sure that they are happy little trails and always remember. <laughs> we don't we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. I got a little more inspired for the second meme build. The second meme build is Silent Hill Head. For this build, I tried to get as close as I could to the real feeling of a Silent Hill game as you possibly can in Dead by Daylight. So for this, you're going to want to burn the thickest mist offering that you can, like purple mist if possible, because Silent Hill, full of mist, everyone knows this. You're also going to want to bring the add-ons Rust Colored Egg and Lost Memories book. For perks, you're going to want to bring the most confusing perks possible. Stuff like Trail of Torment, Dark Devotion, Knockout, and Distressing. The goal of this build is just to try and scare survivors and confuse them and make them have no idea what's going on. You want to try and become Pyramid Head from Silent Hill and make survivors wonder what is going on? Where is everybody? What is happening? Who am I? Why am I here? I'm looking for Silent Hill. Is this the right way? Is it dangerous? And an honorable mention for a meme build does go out to basically any build that has Mad Grid in it. Uh, the basic shell would be like Mad Grid, Agitation, Iron Grasp, and then something. The animation for Pyramid Head's Mad Grid is just honestly hilarious because of how large the Great Knife is, and I couldn't bring myself to not shout it out here. Just listen to the pure sounds of joy when I saw it on the PTV for the first time on my Twitch stream. Oh my <laughs> word. <laughs> Oh, poor Cheryl. Oh, God. She's just getting thrown around. Oh, no. Oh, dear. She's not going to recover from this. <laughs> I love this. Dude, this is the new meta. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> That's gonna be you better, I don't know. Her Dude, poor totally spine! <laughs> Her poor everything! <laughs> Good god! And that's it for this episode of Entity Education, covering Pyramid Head, who also has some Japanese names that I'm not going to attempt to say again. You could also call him the Executioner, but no one will take you seriously if you do. As always, links to all social media, Twitch stream, Patreon, whatever else in the description below. Please leave a like if you liked the video or learned anything, and subscribe for more in the future. Thank you as always for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.